Hello and welcome to this Electronics for Engineers video on using Excel for series RLC calculations and using Multisim Live to check those calculations. We're going to use Excel to work out various voltages and the current and the phase angle on a series RLC circuit just like this. And the beauty is that once we've set up our equations, we can change all of the input values and get the output values from Excel. So the first thing we're going to do is get a, an Excel spreadsheet or a Google Sheets. They both work. And we're going to get the supply voltage column, frequency, the resistance that we can input, the inductor that we're using, and the capacitor. And these green columns will be the inputs that we can change. Then we'll get the capacitive reactance, inductive reactance, and impedance worked out for us. The current in amps or milliamps, and the resistor voltage, inductor voltage, and capacitor voltage. And then we can work out the phase difference in degrees, and we can do a check to show that our supply voltage is as we thought it would be. So we'll use a 100 volt supply at 500 hertz. A one kilo ohm resistor and a 33 milli henry inductor and a capacitor. I'll put one to the exponent of minus six, which is one microfarad. And then we'll work out the capacitive reactance, which is one over two pi fc. So we type equals to get a formula one divided by, and then we put everything else in the bracket to be sure. When we use the value of pi, we have to use an open and close bracket to return the actual value. Then we do star for times, and then we multiply by the frequency cell, and then multiply by the capacitor cell, and then press enter. Xl is 2 pi fl, so we put equals 2 star pi open close brackets and then star for times, and then the frequency cell, and a star for multiply by the inductor value cell. Z is a little bit more involved, but it's still easy to do. Z is equal to the square root of the adjacent size squared plus the opposite side squared of our phasor diagram. So that's SQRT for the square root of and choose the resistor cell, and then do a chevron 2, so that's the resistor cell squared, and the plus sign, and you can either click on the cells or write their name, for instance, G2. So that's XL minus XC in that bracket, and we square that. Make sure we've got the same amount of closed brackets as we have open brackets. Current from Ohm's law, I equals V over Z, you put equals, and then that's cell A2 divided by H2 for the voltage divided by the impedance. The resistor voltage is equal to the current times the resistance, so that's I2 times C2. Similarly, the inductor voltage is I times the inductive reactance. So that's I2 times G2. Finally, the capacitor voltage is the current times the capacitive reactance, or I times XC. Then we can do a check just to make ourselves feel better that this all works. The supply voltage on the phasor diagram is the square root of the adjacent side squared plus the opposite side squared, where the adjacent side has the resistor voltage and the y axis has VL and VC. This should return a value of 100 volts, and it does. Then the phase difference in degrees. Excel always defaults to radians. 
So we need to put equals the degrees version of tan to the minus 1 or a tan. And then for the numerator, we'll use another bracket. Put xl minus xc. Close the numerator bracket. Then forward slash for divide. And then the resistance. Then close the brackets off. The phase difference is 35.69 degrees. There's a circuit on Multisim Live, but you'll notice that I've made the supply voltage instead of 100 volts, I've done it at 100 times the square root of 2, or 141 approximately. And the only reason for doing this is because Multisim Live gives us RMS probes. But if we increase the voltage by the square root of 2, those RMS values are in fact the peak values, so it's easier to find out the values of the peak voltages. VR is correct from Excel and Multisim Live. VC at 25.85, they agree with each other. And VL, those two voltages agree as well. The current is shown on both systems as 81 milliamps. Now to check if the phase difference is correct using Multisim Live's grapher. The time difference between these two probes, the supply voltage and the current, which is the phase angle, is 198.07 microseconds. And that does agree with a phase difference of 35.65 degrees. So it's very accurate considering we've used an observation of the graph. If you want to know how to do these, then please watch my videos on series RLC circuits and on finding phase angles. So hopefully this was useful. Have a go yourselves. Whenever you change the values in Excel for the inputs, it will immediately give you all of the new answers. So it saves a lot of time on calculators. All the best and please like and subscribe.